Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm explaining exactly what an auditory brainstem implant is and why it could be your last resort if you want to hear again. Coming up. When you consider treating your hearing loss, you typically think of three different treatment options. Hearing aids, cochlear implants, or some surgical procedure to repair the damaged structures of your outer or middle ear. But for a few rare types of hearing loss, none of these treatment options are appropriate. And if you unfortunately happen to be one of these individuals who has one of these rare forms of hearing loss, you might be questioning whether or not you have any treatment options available to you. This is where the auditory brainstem implant, or ABI for short, comes into play. To say that ABIs are uncommon would be an understatement, because as of this recording, there are probably only a few thousand people in the entire world who have one. To get an understanding of just how rare auditory brainstem implants are, consider the fact that in 2020, worldwide sales of auditory brainstem implants was only $62 million. Hearing aid sales worldwide in 2020 was $6.4 billion. So what types of hearing loss actually require an auditory brainstem implant and what do they do? Generally speaking, there are only four different types of hearing loss. You have sensorineural hearing loss, conductive hearing loss, mixed hearing loss, and even hidden hearing loss. Sensorineural is the most common. This has to do with the deterioration of the hair cell-like structures inside of your cochlea, which is your hearing organ. When this happens, sounds tend to become less audible, and in order to correct this type of hearing loss, you typically have to use a hearing aid to restore the audibility. Conductive hearing losses are caused when the conductive pathway of sound through the outer and middle ear becomes obstructed. Think of things like earwax or foreign objects inside of the ear canal, a hole in the eardrum, or even calcified ossicle bones that don't allow the vibration of sound to transfer from the eardrum into the inner ear. Mixed hearing loss is simply a combination of sensorineural and mixed hearing loss at the exact same time. And hidden hearing loss is a relatively new form of hearing loss where someone has completely normal hearing thresholds, but they still have difficulty hearing. Individuals who require an auditory brainstem implant actually have sensory neural hearing loss, that first type of hearing loss that I mentioned. But this particular type of hearing loss is not caused by the deterioration of hair cells inside of the cochlea. This type of sensory neural hearing loss is caused by a tumor growing on the auditory nerve or absent auditory nerves altogether. That's why hearing aids or even cochlear implants are not affected effective at all at treating this particular type of sensorineural hearing loss. Because you can stimulate sound all you want to in the inner ear, but if that inner ear has nowhere to transmit sound through because you don't have a functioning auditory nerve, it doesn't matter anyway. One particular condition that often causes this type of hearing loss is neurofibromatosis type 2, otherwise known as NF2. NF2 is a genetic condition where the gene that prevents the growth of tumors in your nervous system is faulty, which means that you end up generating tumors all over the place, and for whatever reason, these tumors really love to grow on your auditory nerves. If you happen to grow a tumor on just one auditory nerve, the typical treatment recommendation is to either use a cross transmitter to send sound from your deaf ear over to your better hearing ear so you can understand people on that side of you, or using a bone anchored hearing device that is actually implanted in your skull here. It would vibrate your skull and then your better hearing ear can actually pick up those vibrations so once again you can hear sounds coming from your bad side. However, in the case of NF2, individuals often develop tumors on both auditory nerves at the same time. And when those tumors grow to a particular size, they impede the flow of sound going through the auditory nerve. And ultimately, those tumors need to be completely removed, which usually leaves these individuals completely deaf in both ears at the same time. This is where an auditory brainstem implant comes into play. An ABI is implanted similar to how a cochlear implant is. However, instead of placing electrodes inside of the cochlea, these electrodes are attached directly to the cochlear nucleus of the brainstem. Yes, they actually attach this to your brain. When it comes to the hardware of the ABI, you have a processor that houses the microphones and a transmitter coil that is your external portion. The implanted portion consists of a receiver that receives the signal from the transmitter coil and sends that signal to the electrode array that looks a little bit like a fly swatter. And since the electrode array is surgically attached directly to the cochlear nucleus, it bypasses the ear and the auditory nerve completely. 
When the cochlear nucleus is stimulated by these electrodes, the brain actually hears that stimulus. What's the catch? Well, auditory brainstem implants are not even close to being as effective as hearing aids or cochlear implants. But when you cannot use hearing aids or cochlear implants, you essentially have no other option, and getting some of your hearing back is better than getting no hearing back. Now, if you're wondering whether or not you may actually need an auditory brainstem implant, these are extremely rare, like I mentioned. So in addition to NF2, there's only a few other situations where you might actually need one. These conditions may include an absent or malformed cochlea, absent or underdeveloped auditory nerves, head traumas that damage the cochlea and or the auditory nerves, or other non-NF2 tumors growing on your auditory nerves. Individuals who need an auditory brainstem implant typically have a team of professionals that they're working with. They have a neurosurgeon, a neurootologist, as well as an audiologist. After determining that hearing aids or a cochlear implant is not an appropriate treatment option for you, your treatment team will decide whether or not you're a good candidate for an auditory brainstem implant. The surgery to get an ABI typically takes several hours. Recovery after the surgery usually takes several days inside of the hospital, as well as several weeks at home, and your auditory brainstem implant doesn't become activated usually for several weeks after surgery. Performance outcomes can vary greatly between individuals and children typically outperform adults. Like I mentioned briefly before, performance outcomes with auditory brainstem implants are less than when it comes to hearing aids and cochlear implants. The hope is that an auditory brainstem implant will help you distinguish between different sounds, help you hear environmental sounds, and assist you in lip reading. I should also mention that individuals who receive an auditory brainstem implant that did not have NF2 typically outperform individuals who do have NF2. Some studies indicate that open set sentence recognition scores are 59% on average for people without NF2 and 10% on average for people with NF2. However, I personally know someone with NF2 who got an auditory brainstem implant and he outperforms individuals who did not have NF2 with their ABI. Like any form of hearing treatment, auditory rehabilitation is critical if you want to hear your best with an auditory brainstem implant. If you would like to hear the experience and perspective of someone with NF2 who actually got an auditory brainstem implant, I highly encourage you to watch my Dr. Cliff Show interview of Matt Hay, who is the author of Soundtrack of Silence. Matt's story is borderline unbelievable. The amount of struggles that he went through and the perseverance that he had to overcome his NF2 to be able to hear again is absolutely inspiring for all individuals with hearing loss. With that said, as you can see, there is pretty much no type of hearing loss out there that cannot be treated. So, if you are not a good candidate for a hearing aid, a cochlear implant, or some kind of surgical procedure to repair damaged structures inside of your ear, then an auditory brainstem implant could be the right treatment option for you.